Welcome back, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hugh over at Wouldn't It Be Nice YouTube channel issued a January clock challenge. So this week's project is a clock. I'll leave a link to Hugh's channel below. In this scene, I'm forming what will eventually be the bottom of the clock or the back of the clock, I guess. I'm just gluing together two pieces of walnut that I had on hand. And then eventually I'll cut those into a circle. And then what seemed like 953 clamps later, I finally got this piece of probably 12 by 12 walnut all glued up. Okay guys, I finally got to use my brand new drum sander. I'm so excited for this thing. It did the most wonderful job, and I couldn't be happier with it. Since it was my first time using this, I didn't want to take off too much at a time, so as you can see, there's several passes on each side. Probably could have shortened that time by taking a little more off, but I didn't want to ruin it the first time I got it. <laughs> In this scene, I'm just making a tenon out of scrap wood that I will glue to the back of the walnut for the back of the clock. Now I'm just using some tight bond three to glue the scrap wood tenon to the back of the walnut. Now I know what you're thinking, Megan, you didn't film any part of making a segmented ring. That is because this is a ring that was left over from a project I did about a year ago. My first attempt at a segmented bowl. And it kind of failed. <laughs> but this is before I was videoing anything and had any ideas that I was going to be making YouTube videos. So I set this ring along with a couple of others aside as they were too big for the existing bowl and decided that this was the perfect time to use them. So with the help of every clamp in a 10 mile radius, I got this thing glued up. Now I'm just chewing it up, making it round. I got a new sticker this week from Seth over at Brickhouse Craftworks. Be sure and check his channel out. I will leave a link to it in the description below. I always got to have the gratuitous look at my shaving shot. In this scene, I'm just finishing rounding it up, giving it a little bit of personality. And look at those little wispy shavings. They're so cute. And now for the inside, just chewing that up, making sure it's uniform.
And now I'm just making sure that this part has a flat bottom as this is where the clock face will go. and then for some sanding. I didn't put a lot of effort into the sanding of the bottom of what you're seeing here as it's going to be covered up by a clog face. So it was just enough to make sure that there was a flat surface and then something that the glue could adhere to. And then just putting some denatured alcohol on it to get rid of the dust. Some myelin sanding sealer. Some Yorkshire grit. Some Yorkshire grit microfine. In this scene, I'm just using the calipers to measure the inside diameter of the clock so that I can print out the clock face accordingly. In this scene, I'm just taping up the edges so I can mount it in the cold jaws to turn off the tenon. In this scene, I'm just using the Easywood Tools rougher to slowly get rid of the tenon. And then I switch over to my Thompson Tools 5 8 inch bowl gouge as I can get a little deeper into the cut with that. And now I've removed the live center, so I'm just taking nice easy cuts so as not to throw the clock off the jaws. And then this will never happen again, but almost right off the tool, it was a perfectly straight edge, so I'm glued another piece of walnut to that as I realized that I needed a place for the battery to go. So here I'm just truing up the edge, making it look uniform with the rest of the clock. Now I'm just using the Sorby one inch scraper to give it a nice finish. Here I'm just using my bowl gouge to give it a nice even finish on the bottom. And as with every other video, I didn't point the camera to it, so that's neat. And then just a couple more passes with the scraper. And now I'm just using a couple different sizes of Forstner bit to make a hole for the battery pack. And it was about here that I realized I probably should have taken a couple extra seconds when I was gluing on this back piece to line up the grain of the wood, but I think it looks okay still, so whatever. <laughs> In this scene, I'm using a 5 16 by 24 tap to thread the hole for the clock mechanism spindle. And then some more sanding. And 
And then the same finishing steps as before. Denature Dog Hall, Myland Sanding Sailor, Yorkshire Grit, Yorkshire Grit Fine. Finally get all that work done, and then this happens. I was so mad. I thought I had planned out the mortise properly, but I guess not. Apparently something happened when I chucked this as it got a little tiny bit wobbly here towards the end. And then just one final bit of sanding. Okay, you guys, this is the most nerve-wracking part of the whole thing. Here I'm cutting out the slot for the pane of glass that I had custom made for this. As you can see in the video, I just kind of slowly crept up on this so it was a perfect fit. And now for the assembly. Here I'm putting on some spray adhesive to the back of the clock face that I had printed up. And now I'm just assembling all the dials. Just a couple final adjustments. And looky there, it works. Okay, this was probably the second most nerve wracking part of the whole thing. I wanted just the tiniest little bead of silicone around the edge of this so that the glass would stay on there and not make a mess. But I couldn't get the dang silicone tube to work. So I ended up cutting a bigger slot than I really needed. But it all worked out in the end and I got the glass placed in there nicely. Here I'm just going around the edges with the glass cleaner, both cleaning off the glass and getting rid of any excess silicone that appeared. And then just for good measure and with a little tiny bit of clamping force, I put some clamps around the edge of the glass just to make sure that it's set properly. There you have it, a finished working clock. Here I sit almost 24 hours later and it's still keeping perfect time. I am pretty proud of this clock. Mistakes were made, good times were had. See what I did there? But overall, I'm pretty proud of this clock. Shout out to Hugh at Wouldn't It Be Nice. Thank you so much for setting this challenge in motion. I'm happy to be a part of the challenge. A huge shout out to the other makers involved in this challenge. You guys are inspiring, and your works are incredible. Thank you as always to all my subscribers. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button and comment below. Stay awesome everyone. Love to all.